Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Andrew Yang, and we're going to talk about the path to getting Trump votes. All right, so uh, let's jump into this. All right, so I think a f- absolutely fantastic template is shown in The Mandalorian Episode 2 for how to get Trump votes. All right, let me lay this out for you. All right, so first and foremost, there are spoilers for The Mandalorian Episode 2. Oh, actually, there are spoilers for the Mandalorian series in this content. All right, so in The Mandalorian Episode 2, the Mandalorian uh, comes back to his ship, his spaceship, right? And uh, he's on this this little um, planet, right? Uh, And it's very dry planet, much like Tatooine. It's not Tatooine, but it is similar to Tatooine, right? So it's a dry, desert-like planet comes back to this one spot and he's going to get into his ship and fly off to his next destination. Well, his, his, his spaceship, right, his bounty hunter spaceship is stripped of its parts, and is actually mostly stripped of its parts, and the Jawas are in the middle of actually stripping his ship. So he sees them on a hill and runs down, and they run away in the Jawa sand crawler, okay? They take... They take probably 80% of the gear in his in his ship. The only thing that's left on his ship, they've taken the navigation system, they've taken the life support systems, they've taken the weapon systems, they've taken everything off of his ship except the, the basic rigid frame structure and the, and the engine frame structures, right? So they've stolen almost all the parts on his ship, right? So he's upset, right? And uh, he, he uh, chases the Jawas, fails to get his uh, parts back, and then he goes back to his only ally on the planet, who is Queel. Queel is an Ugnaught, okay? And uh, uh, Ugnaughts are the um, the people who have kind of like a, they have a, sna- a, a kind of a flat snout, right? And we saw the Ugnaughts for the first time in uh, Empire Strikes Back on Bespin Cloud City, right? And the Ugnaughts were Lando's, they were on Lando's city, and the Ugnaughts took... Um, they specifically took, the Ugnaughts specifically took C-3PO and stripped him for parts, like stripped him apart. They, they actually took him apart and they, they actually, you know, did what they needed to, to, to take him apart, right? So that's the first time we see Ugnaughts, but Queel is an Ugnaught who lives on this dry desert planet and he is a moisture farmer and he is doing moisture farming, Right. So we so all this is happening, and basically at this point, uh, the Mandalorian doesn't have the parts for his ship, right? And he's frustrated. And he says to Quill, "Hey, you know, I'm done, man. I can't, like, you know, I can't go anywhere. They've they've destroyed my ship." And this 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 is the key here, like, and everybody needs to listen very carefully. All right. So first, before we go any further, right? Uh, Trump voters are not Jawas, right? And the reality is, like, in um, at points in the Mandalorian, uh, they people ref- talk about the the Jawas who are not Queel the Ugnaught. Everybody else talks about the jo- the Jawas like they're grubby little sand thieves, right? That's that's the view of them, right, from externally, right? But we learn more in this episode about what the Jawas really are. So. Trump voters are not Jawas, but they have an incredibly high number of attributes that are very, very similar to Jawas. And the way that the Mandalorian gets back his parts from the Jawa is an app from the Jawas is an absolute template for how we are going to take votes from how we are going to get the votes that the Trump voters have that we need and use them in our machine, not so, and, and and they won't be available to be used in the red machine. We want to use them in the blue machine. We need Trump votes for the blue machine. We want to deny those Trump votes, those parts, for the red machine. Okay, and what happened in episode two of the Mandalorian is a perfect template for how this is done. Right. So the Mandalorian goes goes to uh, Queel, the Ugnaught, and he says, yeah, they destroyed my ship. And Queel says something with deep wisdom, right? Listen carefully. Queel says, no, the, the Jawa steal, they do not destroy. 
And I, when I heard this, I was like, holy cows, this is important, right? And I think it, it, it shows how ignorant we have been on the Dem side when we think about Trump voters, right? There's a lot of anger, and, and there's even just, you know, and there's there's even a sentiment that, that is attached to anger that has that has a very harsh name, you know, like uh, we're starting to put put it as a special category of crime, right? And when it, and there's a lot of that between going from Dems toward Trump Trump voters, and it, and the reality is just like the Mandalorian did not understand the Jawas, did not respect the Jawas the way Queel did, the Dems don't understand or respect Trump voters the way they should, right? And it's damaging them. It's it's damaging what the Dems can accomplish, right? And it's t it's taking them off of their focus and making it harder for them to accomplish the things they want, okay? All right, so Mandalorian had a lot of anger toward, and another word, uh, toward the Jawas. But Quill understood them and respected them, right? And while the rest of the world, this you know, this little desert world, saw the Jawas as these grubby little sand thieves, right? He understood them for what they were. Quick, capable, ad hoc engineers. That's what they are, right? And he, he explained they do not destroy, they steal. There's a difference. And that's exactly, in my opinion, what the Trump voters have done, right? They stole, right? And I, w I wouldn't say they, not in a, I don't think that the election was, that the, anything untoward or illegal happened in the 2016 election. I think just Hillary Clinton just got her, her political teeth kicked in and that's all that happened, right? Like, I don't really think there were any laws broken. I'm not for impeachment or any of that stuff, right? Um, I'm definitely for beating Trump, but I don't think there was anything criminal that happened in 2016. But I do think the Trump voters absolutely stole that election, not in like a cruel and illegal way, but in a winsome and charming way, exactly the way the Jawas stole all the Mandalorian stuff, right? And we're going to talk about that. Like, all right. So, so basically uh, the Jawas, when they stole his stuff, they didn't just hack it out and then destroy the frame, right? They left the frame of his ship completely intact, right? They just took what they wanted and they took it carefully. They dismantled his ship. They did not destroy his ship. It is incredibly important to understand this distinction, right? They dismantled it because they were either going to sell it for parts, which we've seen Jawas do, or they were going to use it for other purposes. And that's what the Trump voters did, right? They took the parts of this democracy, of this nation that they needed and now the Trump voters are using those parts. They didn't destroy them and we often, often, often on the Dem side say that Trump voters are destroying this country. It's not the case, right? They took those parts and those parts are being used for other purposes. Purposes that the Dems don't understand, purposes that the Dems don't appreciate, right? Now, here's the thing, all right? So now we understand that the Dems really need to get correct in their head, that they need to understand and respect Trump voters, right? How is it done? Well, it shows it right in Mandalorian episode two, exactly how you get something from someone who does not want to give you that thing, someone who is opposed to you, someone who has incredibly different values and behaviors than you, right? So what does the Mandalorian have to do? First, first, he has to find somebody with wisdom and listen, right? And the Dems need to do that. Guess what? I'm somebody with wisdom. Y'all can listen to me. <laughs> well, you can find any any other ally as well. I'm, I'm just one queel. I'm just one ugnot in America, right? All right. So, so basically, first the Mandalorian found an ally who had wisdom and he listened to him, right? And the next thing he did was he went, the Mandalorian went with Quill to the Jawas. You have to go to where they are, right? You can't tell them to come to you. You can't try to solve the problem separate from them. You have to go to where they are, right? So if you're trying to get something from someone who is opposed to you, who has different behaviors, who has different values than you, you have to go to them. 
And when you go to them, get this, right? So Quill takes the Mandalorian to the Jawas, and he, and he says, okay, Mandalorian, it's time for us to parlay, right? It's time for us to negotiate with the Jawas. So the first and foremost is you got to take your side iron and your long iron and leave them here and come unarmed to talk to the Jawas. And the Mandalorian said something incredibly important that I think there'll be massive ramifications from this statement. He said, my irons are part of my religion. I can't believe Disney actually put that in that show. I'll tell you right now, just like uh, Greedo, that's the new Greedo, that's the new hot shot first. That line is not going to survive another edit. I guarantee it. When uh, when Disney is sold to uh, uh, Blizzard, right? <laughs> And Blizzard does their edit of The Mandalorian. I guarantee you that line is going to be gone. Guarantee it, right? I could not believe Disney allowed that to actually get in the show. The, I could do five videos on that statement alone. Right? But I'm going to keep moving here. All right. So The Mandalorian has very powerful behaviors and beliefs and credos, right? But we went when he went to the Jawas, this is important. Quill's like, I don't care what you believe, what your behaviors are. You've got to set them aside in order to negotiate. Take your side irons, take your long irons, keep them on the sledge, right? And you come over here and you talk unarmed, right? And so Mando does that, right? By the way, Mando is just a short nickname for Mandalorian. All right, so, um, and people call Mando, Mandalorian Mando, right? Uh, it's not really his name, it's a nickname, right? And it's not a nickname he chose, it's what people call him, okay? But I'm going to use it, right? So Mando goes over, uh, and he talks, and he goes over with Quill to talk to the Jawas, right? And he has to put aside his strongly felt credos for a minute, for a short period of time, while he negotiates with the Jawas. And this is important. So whatever precious little beliefs you have, you need to shut your mouth for five minutes when you go and try to get a Trump voter to, uh, to, to give you their vote to get that part you need to, to steal it from the red machine and put it in the blue machine, right? And that's the thing, right? And and so and this, and boy, I'll tell you, I think on the Dem side, we have a really, really hard time with this, right? The, uh, the, the Reds, the conservatives, the Republicans, they have an incredible uh, appreciation for silence, right? Big, strong type, like, you know, what, what big, strong, silent, silent, right? Dems are rarely silent. We almost never shut up. I'm definitely part of that problem. Right? I do 20-minute videos every day, desperately trying to cut them in half and constantly failing. So I'm part of the problem here. But, but boy, Dems need to talk less, listen more, without a doubt. It's important, right? So so that so that's another one is, you know, basically he had to... So he, he had to put his beliefs aside. He had to be quiet for a minute. He had to listen first, right? The other thing is, yeah, so basically, he had to get an ally with wisdom. He had to listen to that ally with wisdom. He had to go to, he had to physically go to where the Jawas were. He had to um, put, a, put aside his deeply believed credos and not talk about them for five minutes, long enough to get an agreement with, with these Jawas, right? And in addition to that, he had to... Uh, oh, right. So when they get there, the Jawas, Quill start, Quill starts the negotiation, right? And Mandalorian can't really speak. He speaks very, very poor Jawa, just a little bit. But Quill speaks very strong Jawa, right? And so that's another issue is you need to understand their language, right? Now, when we talk about Trump voters are not a people, they're a community. They're made up of, of a diverse uh, amount of people. They're made up of men and women. They're made up of uh, of different um, heritages, right? They're a community. They're not a people, right? When you're dealing with a community, they have their own language. That language is not a literal language. It's not like Spanish or, uh, uh, sorry, yes, it's not Spanish or Cantonese or, uh, you know, or uh, Mandarin. It's not a literal language. It is a collection of words, words that have different meanings for that community, a collections of word sequences, a collection of um, deferences, a collection of a language 
that is made up of other words, other phrases, other sequences, other, other um, verbal deferences, all these kinds of things. And you need to speak their language, right? And that's why you're getting that ally with wisdom because often they will speak that language better, right? Trump voters have their own language and we need to start learning it, right? If, we, if we're going to get their vote, we need to understand their language. We don't need to understand all of it, but we definitely need to understand some of it, right? So you have to speak their language. And the other thing is you have to give something, right? So the last thing that Mando did was he gave something to the Jawas in order to get what he needed, right? And so, and that's a tricky one, right? Because what do we have that Trump voters want, right? And it gets even weirder than this, right? Now, to me, the only thing you really can give them, right, legally, legally, we cannot buy votes. That's against the law, right? But you know what you can give someone in order to get their vote that is completely legal? Respect, right? Time, attention, respect, listening, right? If you converse with a person and you show that you understand them and you show that you respect them, right? Th th those can be gifts that can be far more valuable than anything tangible. Often intangible gifts can be far more valuable than tangible gifts. And so I encourage every single one of you, if you have access, uh, rewatch uh, The Mandalorian Episode 2 and understand it is a template that shows how the Dems can get Trump votes if they're willing to go through the steps and do the labor. It's incredibly important, incredibly important, right? Uh, if you don't have Disney Plus, start talking to your friends and see who does. Ask them if you can come over, right? Um, and that's a great way, you know. It's, and most people who have uh, Disney Plus will be very happy to rewatch those episodes because they are absolutely fantastic. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear. Oh, oh, wait. All right. I before I wrap, everything I talked about today, Yang doesn't need to do any of it. It's all Yang Gang. This is what Yang Gang needs to do to procure Trump votes. And The Mandalorian Episode 2 is an absolute step-by-step -step template for securing Trump votes. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.